Hi guys, today we're going to talk about macromolecules. These are large molecules common in everyday products um, and in your body that allow us to carry out essential functions of life. We're going to talk about three main uh, macromolecules today. We're going to talk about what they have in common structurally and what they do for your body. First of all, let's break down this complicated word. Macromolecules comes from the word macro and molecule. Macro refers to things that are very large. Um, a molecule is anything that has uh, two or more atoms that are held together by chemical bonds. Um, if you have physical science recently, you've talked a lot about different types of chemical bonds um, and how they hold uh, atoms together. Um, these are different, macromolecules are different from, um, you know, small or uh, single atoms um, or small particles in the body that also have a function. So we're looking at not small items today, but we're looking at these large molecules. And we use the word macromolecule because macromolecules are built of monomers, and these are building blocks, they're repeating building blocks that add up together to create a large molecule. What's nice about macromolecules that are built of monomers is once you figure out the little Lego piece, the building block, then everything after that is just a bunch of those building blocks glued together. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. But <clears throat> know these two terms. Monomers are the single units. Um, they're still uh, you know, molecules of many atoms held together. But once you glue these building blocks together, um, you get a big molecule uh, made up of the polymer. We're going to look at uh, three main types of macromolecules today. We're going to look at proteins, what they do, how they're structured, carbohydrates, what they do and how they're structured, and lipids. You've actually already looked at one very important macromolecule, DNA. DNA is composed of nucleotides, which act as the monomer. And as the nucleotides repeat on both sides of the DNA ladder, you get one large DNA molecule, which is the polymer. So let's talk about our first monomer in more detail. We or our macromolecule. We have protein here. Um, protein is made out of the atoms carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Some common examples um, are going to be meats and dairies, uh, eggs, nuts, uh, legumes, and a lot of meats are examples of the proteins that you're intaking in your diet. And they're also used internally in cell processes um, to provide structure um, in tissues and to provide transport of messages, and then in enzymes, which help um, speed up chemical reactions um, and allow them to occur in a way that your body can uh, use them more readily. Um, oh wait, let's go back to proteins for a second. So proteins are made of monomers too. They have building blocks, small pieces that repeat over time um, give you this bigger piece. So take a moment and given what you know already about proteins, what do you think the building block or the smaller piece of a protein that repeats multiple times could be um, to form the protein. So the protein is the polymer. Take a moment to think about what the monomer is. Guesses? The amino acids are the monomers to the protein, which is the polymer. So you already know that a string of many amino acids together form a protein and that your body can break down proteins that are ingested during um, eating to um, kind of uh, gain all those amino acids that it can reform. Let's talk about another one, uh, another macromolecule called carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, there are just so many types of carbohydrates in our diet. We have simple carbohydrates like syrups and simple sugars. Um, table sugar is um, a very simple carbohydrate. This syrup that I'm holding here has a lot of glucose in it, which is um, a monomer of many of the complicated carbohydrates that I'll show you in a second. And then we have really complex carbohydrates where there's a lot of stored energy in things like rice or potatoes, things that have a lot of starch in them um, that 
are delicious. So you get glucose or a simple carbohydrate and starch, a more complex carbohydrate in a lot of the things that we eat. And these smaller carbohydrates provide the cells with a lot of quick energy. Remember we talked about how glucose is used um, by the mitochondria or uh, products of glucose are used by the mitochondria to allow the cell to use energy. And then starch is a longer term energy. So uh, a lot of those small glucose pieces are glued together. Let's take a look down here. Each one of these is a glucose molecule. And you can see that many of these glucose molecules have been glued together. This larger molecule is starch, just simple starch, things that you would find in rice or potatoes or bread. The body can break down these starches into smaller glucoses and use that as energy. And plants can do this too. They store a lot of their energy in the form of starch and then later can use it, um, break it down again. Carbohydrates also provide a lot of structure. Um, I think it's kind of fun to think about the same building blocks or monomers that make this starch molecule um, can also be formed and reformed, very similar products, into creating the um, shells of beetles and a lot of our insects with exoskeletons or support on the outside. Those are carbohydrates as well. So carbohydrates are great for energy, but they also play a role in structure in many organisms. The last macro macromolecule we'll talk about today are lipids. Lipids are made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen as well, and they're found in a lot of fats and waxy-like products. So uh, earwax is a famous example, uh, beeswax. Um, a lot of our fats that are so delicious are basically lipids. Um, so cooking oil that you'd use in making brownies and butter and all that kind of stuff. But in addition to the dietary examples, they're really important in your cell membranes. We've talked before that the outside structure um, or the plasma membrane of a cell, that is made up of lipids as well. And the properties of lipids are incredibly important. We'll talk a little bit about that. So we know that they are great for long-term energy storage. These lipids, um, they fill us up. They give us long-term energy. And as you can see in the picture of this triglyceride fat down here, if you remember some of the letters you saw in the glucose molecule that represent the atoms, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this, now you have this molecule that has all of these carbon and hydrogens. And so in each of the bonds that holds these atoms together is energy. And so lipids carry a lot of energy. They can also serve really important um, functions, uh, controlling hormones, and um, like we talked about before in cell membrane structure. One thing to note about the lipids that can be a little bit confusing is it's not a simple monomer-polymer relationship like DNA where you stack all the nucleotides on top of each other and you get a long molecule. Or like starch, you stack a bunch of glucoses together and you get a starch. It's a little bit more complicated. The tails, where most of the energy is stored, those are polymers, okay? They are repeating units. Um, but the, the whole lipid itself, we wouldn't consider a polymer. Um, its structure is very different, and the structure allows it to um, serve a function that's a little different than carbohydrates and proteins. So hopefully you guys have seen um, many examples of um, our macromolecules today. I do want to point out that there are some similarities here between these macromolecules. Take a look again at protein, carbs, and lipids. Take a look at the atoms that form these together. There's some similarities. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are found in all three. And that's because carbon, specifically, can form many different types of shapes in the bonds that it makes with other atoms. So it's a really versatile um, atom that needs to form many bonds compared to some other atoms. And the bonds that it forms, um, the covalent bonds that it forms, are very strong and very stable. And so carbon is an element that we see in all life on the planet. In fact, to say you, that something is organic in a biologic sense 
or a chemistry sense, means that it has carbon. If you want more information, in-depth information, all carbon forms bonds that are essential to forming macromolecules, and a comparison of uh, some of the monomers and polymers or shapes of these um, macromolecules. I highly suggest watching the video lecture Introduction to Macromolecules on any of the biology teachers' websites. It goes in a little bit more depth, and it can be very helpful if you're trying to apply some of this um, to labs uh, or analysis questions. It's called Introduction to Macromolecules, and you can find it on YouTube or the biology teachers' websites. That's it. Good luck.